Five star copies all, go ahead. Message to observer, Alpha, three rounds, AT delay in effect, three guns. Bravo, two rounds, two guns, smoke on effect. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This is Andrew from the Options Millionaire Community, home of the number one educational resource for all things investing. It's been a while since I posted a video. It's been a fantastic and very busy few months, very busy quarter, very busy year. As we all know, the market is in throes. Very, very heavy selling action, unlike anything we've ever seen the past two years. And I'm very happy to announce that this community has not only survived, but they have thrived. Where everyone else is getting blown up, we have seemingly begun to put on more and more all-time highs, not only on my profits, but on a lot of the people in the community as well. They are posting gain over gain, career wins, the first time ever that people are having profitable weeks, months in the midst of the hardest market I've ever traded in my life. And that brings me to the purpose of today's video. In the past few months, I have since decided to partner with Bookmap. Unbelievable company, unbelievable customer service, unbelievable product. As me being a volume price analysis trader, this particular product fit right in like a glove. Today, I'm gonna to showcase that product, how I use it, kind of an intro video of the very basic features of this product, and we'll do more videos as we roll it out. And then I'm gonna show you exactly how I was able to obtain these wins right here over the past few weeks. As you can see, the first two weeks of May have been very, very profitable. 14 major plays. These are not including the futures trades. These are just the options trade I've posted. 14 trades, six 100% plus wins, countless other 70%, 80%, 40%, 60%. And then of course, one loss that didn't go so well for us, but that's okay. Sometimes you gotta take a loss. But I'm gonna be going over a few of these trades, how I utilize Bookmap to show me how, when to hold these for some runners for major profit and when to get out. I think you're gonna enjoy, so you're gonna to wanna to stick around. All right, we're gonna go ahead and kick it off here with contracts back on May 2nd. I had a lot of 100% plus wins the past couple of weeks, but I really wanna focus on May 2nd. Why? Because I had one on a call and on a put. Uh, which is really great. When I have a day that I have a big win on a call and a put, it makes me it makes me really uh, confident in the system because I'm able to identify reversals and pivots uh, with a pretty good accuracy. So going back to May 2nd here, uh, we had a lot of uh, choppy action here coming out of the gate. And then obviously we had this big upshoot. And this is where I caught the first call. First indication here was the price action. We had a lot of bottom wicks here on the three minute. Uh, when you have these kind of wicks, wick, 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 wick right here, that it is indicative of reversal to the upside because there is a slight demand zone here where the buyers will hit this, will hit the bid and send this higher. Of course, the 50 simple moving average here was uh, neutral. You can see it flipping back and forth, green, red, green, red. Uh, it's basically flat and the 8 EMA could not break through the 50. It kept bouncing off of it. So uh, when I saw this action here, I entered right here at the bottom of the wick. Uh, and in addition to that, we had the book map. And I want to go over that right here. So this is right at open. This is 829 East Central Time, which is one minute before the open. And you can see right now there's a very large liquidity level at 4100. So uh, just because I'm looking up and down, I don't see anything in the general vicinity here. Uh, I am going to anticipate that they're going to come down and transact this 4100 level. Uh, so let's hit play and see exactly what happens. So there's the bell right there. Uh, we come on down and already they transact this. It's uh, 8.39, which is nine minutes after the open. So it took them nine minutes to come down and clear out this level. It is now completely gone. There's a little bit of liquidity on there. Uh, and then looking up here, they put on these levels, 41.95, 41.80 that were well up above. Uh, this was the closest one. So they took this one out. So now seeing this level, uh, seeing this, there's one way down here, 4,005, which is way on down. And then we've got this level of 4,195, 4,200. So because I see this liquidity is way up here, we have got a lot. We've got a little bit of level here at 4,160, and then it kind of perpetually gets bigger. You've got this 4,170, 4,180, 4,195. So I'm going to be looking for this thing to make a possible move back up because it's the closest one around. Uh, and let's see exactly what happens. So we get this bounce right off that level. It comes back up. It kind of goes back up to the prior pivot, which is the session highs, and then falters back down a little bit, kind of shakes and bakes, and then essentially retreats just a touch right there. Uh, we come back down, we see this liquidity put on there, but there's still not really much else. This is a very light level. Anything under, I don't know, two, 300, I'm not really gonna pay attention to it. It's just very light liquidity, and still everything is way up above us. It looks like they wanna pull us higher. They even put on even more in the past few minutes. So I'm definitely looking for a move to be upside. So right now, uh, my bias is skewed back to the upside, at least temporarily because of all this liquidity that they have put on above us. Uh, also, right here, uh, we let's go back to what the charts look like. We are currently 
right here on the charts. And this is where we start bottom wicking one, two, three, four, and then we start the fifth bottom wick before we rock it. So I am on imminent on a call entry here and I elect to enter the May 2nd 4150 calls and I enter at a price of $12. Wick, and let's see what happens on the book map. So the book map, you finally you see the consolidation here as well, which is what we just saw on the charts. And then the buyer step in, hit this thing, and off we go to the upside. And this is, we enter uh, 4112 on S, on ES, and then this thing climbs up and up and up. You see the buyers really hit it. Uh, the seller, the buyer step in, you see the larger bubbles here indicate higher pressure. The volume candles are a little high. They start putting the volume up higher to tr transact this thing higher and higher, which is telling me that the bid, they're bidding this thing higher and higher. And then look at that thing, it just goes right up until 4161. Now let's go back to the chart. Uh, we get this big, big move upside here. Uh, and then when I start to see the wicks here, there's two things I'm thinking. One, I've got my R5 level, which is significant. You could tell by the tide lighter that I've calculated that level to be a very significant level. I see the top wick start to form. So I elect to go ahead and close out the position uh, for 101% profit. I closed up 2420 for 101% profit. It's a very, very great day. Uh, and then after I do that, I'm going to reanalyze what's going on here. Uh, and figure out where to go next. And we'll go over the next play after this. So the next play I took here were 4080 puts. And these are on May 2nd, zero DTE again puts on these things. And what I'm looking for here is a breakdown of price. Because obviously after the call, we had a couple of wicks here and then the algos turned on and they sold this off. I actually didn't catch this because this happened pretty quick. I wasn't expecting an algo run uh, immediately after the pop, but they did sell this right back off to nearly just under the open and a neutral bias here because it was under R1 and it is above S1. So right in this uh, neutral zone. So I really wanted to turn to the book map to see where they wanted to bring us. And here's where we were at the top of that, the top of that big pop. You see all liquidity was up higher. So let's hit play and see how this really acts. So there's all the uh, liquidity right there. And then they uh, pulled pretty much everything lower, but they start to transact this, uh, transact this thing lower. And you see that, bam, the algos turn on and run this thing all the way down, uh, down to, and this was approximately 11 o'clock Eastern time. They keep just bringing down and down. And then they start putting on more liquidity here at 4,100. So they took it off and they start putting on a decent level here at 4,100, bringing this back lower. And this is you know, about 11.30, 10.30 central time, which is about right here. So then we enter about a hour and 45 minute consolidation zone, which I was not transact, I was not playing in this area. I was letting this chop around here and I was looking for a move either up or down. Now, from a book map standpoint here, uh, there was a lot of liquidity that was spread out, not any one particular level, but a lot overall that was all the way down to 4050. Whereas there was nothing above us except the very large levels way up at 4195, which would have been about a 90 point run. So this level was still there. It was still on my radar and I wanted to be aware of this level and be very cautious on my entry just in case they have as a face ripper all the way back up. So I was watching this level. And this thing started to do its thing and dance around. We'll just speed that up just a little bit. So it starts to enter this consolidation zone. A lot of different liquidity being put on and off. And you could see the 4065 level start to beef up here. They started to beef up the lower liquidity here. So I'm trying to be very market aware. And if you would do follow my trades, if you follow my community, you know that the first big thing about my system is that I'm mark. I put a lot of emphasis on market awareness. You know, market awareness is your number one best tool for managing positive trades and consistent trades over the long haul. And you see my watch list, for example, is very, very intentional. Uh, I've got the top holdings of SPY here, which I monitor. I've got all the different sectors of SPY here, which are all the X sectors. I'm able to take a look at what's the the underlyings of the SPY, the S&P at, at a moment's notice to give me exactly what it wants to do. On top of that, I monitor all the futures, the NASDAQ, which is a big one because sometimes the NASDAQ uh, leads the way. If there's a very tech heavy or a tech, uh, a tech positive day, then you can see the tech that's going to lead the way. You can monitor the NASDAQ. And then I've got the Dow uh, and the Russell 200, the 2000 down there. And then of course, my meat and potatoes. This is where I monitor everything. The SPY, X, Qs, TNX, which are 10-year rates, the bonds, VIX, and then all the different yields down here. And then of course, global markets, because a lot of people don't understand that the global markets do affect the US markets, at least up to a certain point in the morning time before the London markets close in the morning. So very intentional watch list, which is a part of market analysis, which is why I love bookmap so much, because it's yet another tool 
that I can inject into the system to allow me a higher degree of market awareness. So this is what I'm looking for. I'm watching for the liquidity to go lower. And eventually we, the price does break lower here. So we have a final little pop up to clear out a, liar, a higher level of liquidity there. We come up to 41.25 here at 11.20, uh, right about here. And this is where I enter my final put. Uh, because at one, I see the eight come out, the eight come up, eight EMA comes up here. It still can't breach through the 34 EMA here. Uh, but mainly I have a lot of top weeks and the volume starts diminishing. You see the volume candles down here start to diminish off. We have one final high volume pop on a green that instantly fails, which from a price action standpoint is a bearish standpoint. When you have a big pop in buying volume uh, and, the, and, the buy, and the buy candle fails, the sellers step in and hit that. That tells me that there is a decent demand zone uh, or I'm sorry, supply zone right here that it continues to fail, uh, which their sellers overcome the bids and they sell this thing back off. So I am looking for a potential reversal to the downside. So I enter to take a, a, a put here, which are, is the 4080 puts and I get a fill of $11.90 each. And then of course, looking at the book map, we see this thing does start to go lower, which is exactly what I would see, obviously. So we reject that level, we come on down and then with the main level here, they bolster big time, 4100. So I'm looking here. If they can absorb that level 4100 to move lower, I think we could have some considerable downside, especially the fact that they start putting on liquidity lower. And that's the big thing for me holding a position that if I see in my favorable direction, which in this case is down, if I start to see them putting on liquidity lower, 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 that tells me, hey, they may start to aim this thing lower because that's the market and the market is liquidity and the market is the order book. So if I start to see order book being bolstered in the direction that I wanna see, then I wanna hold on this position because that's telling me that we're gonna move lower. So let's hit play and see what happens. They absorb completely that big level and you see when you hit a large level like this, it takes obviously a large amount of volume to burst through that level because you have to transact those levels in order to move through there. Otherwise, it's just you're going to stagnate there. And then, of course, you see these bubbles get big, which indicates a higher volume. You see the volume candles kick up and we take out that 4100 level and then they really start to put on liquidity lower. You see all this come on here. So they, they put on they put on 4085, 4080, 4075, 4070, 4065 all the way down. So I'm thinking, okay, so they're gonna to start to bring this thing lower. And then of course, this is right at noon central. So let's take a look at that, which is right about here. So they finally burst through all those levels there. We have a little pop up off that 41 under level, but it continues on down. So let's go back to the book map and really show that one here. So we have all this green, we keep have, we have a little pop up there, which is probably short covering, nothing weak. And every any time that I see a trend like this with a little pop, I'm very, I don't, I don't wanna be too quick on the gun to sell the position uh, because usually that's some sort of a weak sell, sh uh, short sell cover just for them to close the positions out before we come on back down. Uh, and usually it's indicated by follow through. If I don't see follow through, then it's probably just gonna be short covering. It's not gonna scare me out of the position. And I'm gonna let this thing come on back down. And sure enough, boom, right there was my key indication. Did you all see it? So right there, they put on this 4040 level, a big old 4040 level. So when I start to see that nice, and that's a big one too. When I start to see nice liquidity putting way on down, that gets me really confident on holding a runner. So now I'm still holding those puts. And I'm watching this thing and it finally continues to break down. There's a bunch of liquidity down. I have high confidence that this position can continue to fall. Another short covering and then bam, that completely sell that thing off and lower and lower and lower and down we go. Now, as we get closer to this very large level, which I believe is the bottom because this down here has been on here all day. Uh, this is a very large outlier area. I wasn't looking for it to move down there. I was looking for it to, to move to this level now because this is the one they just put on here. So this did look like it was gonna be a considerable demand zone that could have a strong bounce. So I elected to go ahead and close out the position right here because I didn't want it to get too close to this level because it doesn't have to come all the way down. It could get very close and then we'll, we'll get a bounce or maybe some very short relief. And especially when you're later in the day, this is approximately one o'clock, 1.30, on a zero DT position, any kind of unfavorable movement can really smoke the position. So I elected to go ahead and close out my my put here for 110% profit, which that is the second 100% plus win on the day. Uh, and then I was gonna watch from here. And then let's hit play and see what happens. Uh, we don't even get all the way down here and then we kind of fizzle out, they take all this liquidity off and bam, you see right there, they took off, they cleared out the entire order book right here, took it all off, left that area, it actually took half those orders off and then we rallied right back up. And then of course, we still have this stuff to think about that we touched up here in the morning time. 
Uh, and then of course, we'll speed that up and allow you to see exactly what happens is that they rage this through the rest of the day all the way up to where we were. Just a little breakdown of Bookmap and how I use it and how I use it this past week. And the one thing it's really helped me do is hold runners. I still use my main system, uh, which is here. I still use my main system, which is price action, uh, market awareness with my watch list, monitoring the markets, uh, volume price analysis, EMAs, all that stuff. I still use my main system. That is my bread and butter, but the book map has allowed me to hold positions a little bit longer because when I enter a position, you know, sometimes you don't know if it's going to, you know, it, the market doesn't always work perfectly and it doesn't always, it's not always predictable at, at all. So you can't always rely on just particular technicals. You have to look at some tools to give you an insight to what's happening behind the market, whether it be order flow, whether it be some people use unusual whales, which I, I, I do not. Um, I elected to use Bookmap because it, it fits right into my particular system because it, it gives me a good indication of what is going on with the orders behind the scenes. And it gives me a good visual indication of, hey, liquidity is here, overwhelmingly skewed to one side. So the, the market's probably going to head that direction. So that on top of what I use, uh, it's, it's almost too easy. And that's why in the past two weeks, since I've really started implementing Bookmap, that I have gotten more 100% plus wins than I have in the past year combined, just in the past two weeks, because I'm able to enter as I usually do at a very accurate locale, but then it allows me to hold longer where I wouldn't normally. Normally I would take profit like 50% because, hey man, I don't really know where this is gonna bounce here. But seeing the liquidity skewed overwhelmingly to one side or the other, it, it shot this my accuracy for 100% plays way up. And now I've had at least six uh, in the past two weeks, which is unbelievable. It's allowed me to, to really, really bolster my gains. And the great thing is, is that in this insanely tumultuous market, because the past five months, uh, where other people are struggling, my community is 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 really growing and and, and thriving because of the pri the focus on price action and the focus on the volume in the market. It tells you where it wants to go, and the book map really really helps that. It shows you the directionality of the market and where the underlying the big dogs the institutions want to take this thing. Because if you if you follow the big money, then you're able to follow where the market's going to go because they run the market. So, which again, and why I say that is because that is why I monitor ES and not SPY or other small tickers. I monitor ES because futures run the market. The big dogs run the market through futures, through ES. So if you're able to monitor ES, you could see where the big dogs, the big money is, are putting their money, they're putting their positions to monitor the directionality of the market. Anyway, I hope you all like this video. That's pretty much all I got. A good intro video to Bookmap. I'm going to be talking more and more about Bookmap in the future and how I implement it, as well as new features that I'll be testing and using along with Bookmap. If you are interested in joining Bookmap, uh, head down to the description of this video. You could use my affiliate link to get some money off of your subscription. Highly recommend this tool. If there's one tool that I can recommend outside of actually using TradingView, it is, in fact, Bookmap. It's an absolutely phenomenal tool. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, please come over and join us in the Discord. You could DM me anytime or you could tag me in any of the rooms. There's a lot of great educational benefit to being in the community. Link for the Discord is also down in the description of this video. Come over and join Twitter as well, a good forum where I post a lot of cool market analysis stuff throughout the day. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I'm Andrew with the Options Millionaire community. Till next time, I'm out.